green one. Okay, there it goes. Uh, we have no disclosures. A sleeve gastrectomy is the most commonly performed bariatric operation in the world. A restrictive procedure, a sleeve consists of tubularization of the stomach, decreasing its capacity, and leading to effective weight loss with a low complication rate that appeals to patients and surgeons alike. However, the changes in the volume and shape of the stomach create a high pressure system that predisposes to GERD, and recent studies have demonstrated rates of de novo Barrett's esophagus of almost 20% five years after sleeve gastrectomy. In addition, patients with dephagia after sleeve gastrectomy, even without GERD, are an incredibly challenging clinical problem. We know that poor esophageal clearance predisposes to both GERD and Barrett's esophagus. Prior studies of esophageal motility in obese patients have demonstrated rates of dysmotility of up to 60%, but these studies were done with conventional manometry and generally do not include symptom data. The prevalence of esophageal dysmotility as defined by the Chicago classification version three on high resolution manometry is unknown. We also do not know whether these disorders are symptomatic in these, this population. In fact, despite the extensive surgical changes to the stomach and increasing recognition of the problem of postoperative GERD, there are no guidelines regarding preoperative esophageal manometry or pH testing in bariatric patients. Our study aims to describe the prevalence of esophageal motility disorders and GERD in a preoperative bariatric surgery population undergoing high-resolution manometry and 24-hour pH testing. We present a retrospective review of 362 patients considering sleeve gastrectomy at the University of Washington in a 40-month period. All underwent high-resolution manometry and almost all underwent pH testing and upper endoscopy and filled out symptom surveys. 29.8% of our patients had abnormal manometry. Other than patients with abnormal manometry having a slightly higher BMI, there were no differences between the groups. 32.9% of patients in the entire cohort had an abnormal Demeester score on 24-hour pH testing, but there was no difference between patients with normal versus abnormal manometry. Barrett's esophagus was present in about 1% of this preoperative cohort, which is similar to prior studies of Barrett's in uh, uh, preoperative bariatric patients. When we turned to the results of the symptom surveys, we found that patients with normal manometry were actually more likely to have heartburn, despite having a similar rate of pathologic GERD to those with abnormal manometry. There were no differences in any other symptoms studied. Of the patients considering sleeve gastrectomy, 254 patients had abnormal manometry and 108 patients were abnormal as defined by the Chicago classification. The most common manometric diagnosis was ineffective esophageal motility, or 66 patients, or 18.2% of, of the cohort. The next most common was EGJ outflow obstruction, with almost 7% of the cohort. We also identified 10 patients with jackhammer esophagus, three with distal esophageal spasm, and two with fragmented peristalsis. Ineffective esophageal motility was the most common manometric abnormality in our cohort. Since a sleeve gastrectomy is a high pressure system, as seen on this post-operative manometry study, and is increasingly associated with GERD and Barrett's esophagus, in our practice, we counsel patients to avoid a sleeve gastrectomy in the presence of ineffective esophageal motility. In fact, only 11.6% of patients who underwent sleeve gastrectomy had a diagnosis of ineffective esophageal motility, despite the original indication for manometry being an interest in sleeve. We have demonstrated that patients undergoing a preoperative bariatric workup and being considered for sleeve gastrectomy have a high rate of esophageal dysmotility on high resolution manometry, as well as GERD on 24 hour pH testing. Although the presence of GERD in obese patients is not a surprise, we show that the prevalence of diagnosable esophageal motility disorders, 28.9%, is almost as high as the prevalence of abnormal pH tests, which is 32.9% in this cohort. 
with the contemporaneous symptom surveys administered to patients undergoing manometry and pH testing, we also show that symptoms are a very poor screening tool for esophageal dysmotility in this group. It is unknown why patients undergoing bariatric workup with dysmotility are often asymptomatic, although decreased visceral sensitivity is often suggested. Unfortunately, of course, this study can't shed any light on this question. Oh, can we go back one? As we begin to understand more of the long-term complications of sleeve gastrectomy, especially dysphagia, GERD, and Barrett's esophagus, we should arm ourselves and our patients with the information needed to make good decisions. We have demonstrated that there is a high prevalence of esophageal dysmotility in obese patients, including an almost 20% prevalence of ineffective esophageal motility, and screening based on symptoms is not useful in identifying patients with dysmotility. Although nothing in this study should prohibit patients from undergoing a sleeve gastrectomy even in the presence of dysmotility, screening can allow for more complete discussions of the possible long-term complications of this very popular procedure. Thank you, and I'll take any questions. <laughs>